right. Well, I was brought up in Ramsey um, on May Hill. Uh, I was born in 1952, at the end of the spring in 1952. What can I say about myself? I'm one of three siblings. Uh, my sister Susan is virtually five years older than I am, and my brother is six years younger. My father is Manx. Uh, my mother actually comes from Devon, and they met in um, the RAF in the Second World War. My father hated the RAF uh, because he said it got in the way of his uh, his career in local government. He was in the middle of doing exams. My mother loved the RAF. She was an only child uh, with elderly parents, and she really, really enjoyed it. Uh, they came back. Well, Dad came back to his job. My mother was told that um, as a woman in that era, she was taking work from a man. So she wasn't allowed to work. She just, she, she didn't. Before she married my father, um, she was training um, in Coulson's in Exeter. Her aunt had got a hat shop. She designed hats actually in London in Mayfair. And my mother was being sent down there to help her aunt. Anyway, she decided to join the RAF, I think most much to the upset of her mother and father, but she really loved it because she said she she got away um, and being an only child, uh, she thought it was fantastic. Anyway, she came to the Isle of Man. Uh, she nearly died having my sister, sadly, um, and was told not to have any more children, but because she was an only child, she desperately wanted children. So we really, in a way, were like only children because there were big gaps between us, uh, nearly five years and nearly uh, and nearly six years. Um, I was talking strangely to Christine Kelly, whose father was a, a butcher. We both lived in Mayhill. I was talking to her the, the other day about Mayhill because we've got so much to say over memories of people that lived there. Um, it was a very long road. It was a main road and it went from Cronk Bray, where the Sherlock's lived, all the way up to um, where she lived at the White Gate and then beyond in a way because Lancy Neal had his farm. So we've got lots of memories um, of people on May Hill, but I don't think we've got time for that today. Um, I I played in the garden a lot. My parents are quite strict. I mean, I read about children wandering off, but we really didn't. Uh, we had quite a big garden. Uh, when the house was built, um, my uncle bought the house next to where my parents were. They, they built it on land that was owned by Corrins. I think after the war, it was difficult to get materials to, to build houses. And they first of all went down into a flat opposite the, the Queen's Pier, but eventually they got this land. And my my uncle built loads of, put in lots of fruit bushes and trees. And so I can remember playing out in the garden um, with all these fruit bushes and, and trees on both sides, on, on his side as well, where he lived with his mother before he got married. Um, and there were sheds. I remember making a perfume out of rose petals in sheds. I think all little girls did that. I remember uh, playing with a tennis racket uh, against the wall in the back garden to the Beach Boys music when I was about, I don't know, well, in my teens, anyway, early teens. But um, I didn't get out of the garden very much. They were just very strict. Um, we played, a family moved down the road called Page. Uh, the father was a woodwork teacher and their children were similar, similar to us, really. Vivian was the same age as my sister. Sylvia was in between. Rosalind was a year older than I was. Um, and then Graham was the same age as my brother. So we tended to play to play with them. Although I, I, I did occasionally play with other people. I remember playing with Cynthia Lindsay, who was on the other side. Uh, there were quite a lot of older people there too in May Hill, so there weren't always children of our age. Um, as I got older, I was allowed to go onto Beaumont Road with my scooter, but um, the traffic obviously wasn't the same as it is nowadays. So I lived there till I was um, 22 and got married you know that's what happened in those days we tended unless you went away to college you tended to just stay with your parents until you got married um and that's really about it at the moment right well as i said before i grew up in ramsey and i really did stay in ramsey um until i went to work um in douglas it was very very different to what it is today and there wasn't as much to do. And I think because my mother had come from across, she really didn't know many people. 
My father's side of the family, um, on the Manx side, they were called Collins. My father, um, his father is English. They were North Yorkshire farmers. And um, the Collins side were very, very musical, and they played every instrument going. Um, my uncle Ted, who lived opposite, played saxophone and clarinet and violin. So we were sent to piano. My grandmother insisted that we went to piano. Um, and we went down to a lady at the bottom of the hill called Katie Callow, who used to hit me over the knuckles and I used to cry. And um, I didn't really want to play the piano. I much preferred to dance, but that's a that's a different, different matter. Um, I always remember going in there and she had lots of cats or it seemed like lots of cats and everything was very dark and brown it was a lovely big victorian house but everything was very very dark and brown and i think i've had this thing since then i don't really like very very dark and brown <laughs> color schemes i tend to prefer um bright colors i'm not into sludge very often i'm, I'm sure it's to do with uh, going to music there but so um yes i gave that up after a while i did start dancing it would be fair to say, um, and a lot of people were the same in those days, that our lives were ruled by meal times. So my father used to walk to work. Um, he worked in the town hall, which was uh, six, six minutes away. So my father came home every single lunchtime. Um, and so our life seemed to be ruled. I felt sorry in a way for my mother because, you know, she'd have to be there at lunchtime. The only day that I think she had any respite was um, a Tuesday when he went to, <laughs> went to Rotary and we were allowed um, food that he didn't like to eat, such as pasties and chips with um, pineapple cakes from a lovely store in Waterloo Road. We used to, I used to love Tuesdays because we had junk food, <laughs> according to my father. When he retired, he actually used to eat more stuff like that. But it, even when I started work in Douglas, the whole of Athel Street shut down at lunchtime and everybody went home for lunch. And it's, it's fine, but of course, if you're a wife in your home uh, cooking, then of course you're very restricted to doing anything else. So uh, what else can I say about Ramsey? Well, I was allowed to go over to the Moorock Park as I got older, um, but I was much older. I mean, people, I don't think people realise today how strict families could be. And I think because my mother came from across, didn't know the area, that didn't help either. Um, but I did go to dancing. I started going to ballet, which I really loved. And then this is a funny story, but I came out one day and somebody had... Um, put a cigarette burn on my ballet case and I was most upset about this I didn't get told off you know I didn't get told off over it but my mother said oh um, somebody might be jealous because you've got a nice bag so I insisted that she walked with me then to ballet well then of course she decided that it was meal time and uh, my father would be home for an evening meal so I wouldn't go on my own so that was uh, that was that and then ballroom dancing I did enjoy ballroom dancing I used to go with um, Judy Clegg who I met at Ramsey Grammar School. But um, after a while, my mother said she wasn't going to spend Saturday nights going around competitions, so I pulled out of that as well, really, which is such a shame. Um, I think it had a lot to do with the fact that my mother was an only child across and had led quite an isolated life in a way. Her father, when he came back from the First World War, she was born after the First World War, um, was working away from home in hospitality. So it was her really and a, quite an old mother. Um, and I think my mother had led quite an isolated life. And I think that had a bearing on um, the type of childhood that we had. So, uh, but you know, they were different days and, and there weren't as many things going on in Ramsey um, as there are now. Right, well, <clears throat> we were Catholic. Um, my mother was a Catholic convert. My father's family on both sides were, were been Catholics for generations. Um, we went to St. Mackle's School in Ramsey, which was a very small school. It had two rooms uh, with a dividing wall. Um, and I used to go home at lunchtime. I think the children that stayed to school lunches who came in from the country... Uh, went over to Albert Road School to have the, their lunches. I do remember Albert Road to us was super because it had a big hall and you could do so many things. Um, we had outside loos like a lot of people did in those days and a boys' and a girls' playground. We didn't mix. 
<laughs> I mean, it's amazing, really, but never mind. So, um, yes, I'm told that um, on my first day at school, um, I came back and said I wasn't going again, um, which didn't go down very well. But my father in those days used to cycle to work, so he took uh, the bike. I was quite excited that I could go on his bike. So he said to me, I can't remember this, that he went down and he sort of pushed me in and the teacher pulled me in. I think there was a supply teacher there at the time, a Mrs. Gale, whose daughter um, is married to Michael Whip. Uh, she was at Ramsey Grammar School later as well. But the main the main headmistress at that school, who I liked very much, was a lady called uh, Maureen Ford. And she came in from Douglas every day. Um, she'd lived at the Swiss Chalet on the promenade. Uh, people in Douglas might remember her, but Maureen Ford was lovely and she was straight and she was strict and she was probably what I was used to really. Um, but I liked her very much. And the, the last teacher I had at the school before we went to Ramsey Grammar School was a delightful person. She was called... Um, Miss Quayle, Pat Quayle, she married a man called Mr. Norris in the end, Brian Norris, um, and they lived in Onken. But she was gorgeous. And I can remember with her, she used to read The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe to us. And I was obsessed with Narnia after that. But she was a very, very sweet personality. Now, it was the middle teacher. <laughs> the middle teacher um, was never very nice to me. And I used to always say years later, if I could ever speak to her again and say, you know, why were you as you were? Um, and then I found out why she was like she was. But of course, she got married and gone to Kent. She'll be dead now. So I can I can happily say it. She was called Miss Verdon and she did have her favourites, um, but she was never very pleasant to me. And she'd always give me the most difficult spelling when we had spelling bees. I remember standing there. Um, she'd never give me red to spell. She'd always give me turquoise or purple which really not, she, she wasn't fair. It knocked the confidence out of you, really. Um, so, yes, Miss Verdon. And I found out years later from a cousin who said, oh, she didn't like our family because, which goes back to the fact that her mother had hoped that my father, when he came back from World War II, would marry her, and he didn't. And so she took a pick into me. My sister was older than I was, so she didn't. Um, actually have her and my brother was younger so he had um, Phil Ness as a teacher but I got her and I think one of the cousins <laughs> got her as well but it was the it was the history thing that upset me I suppose the most I love history I do now I did at Ramsey Grammar School I loved it and I always remember we used to listen on the radio we'd be listening it was the last lesson if I recall on a Wednesday we just listened on the radio it was all about things such as Hannibal going over the mountains and we used to have to um, remember after lunch what what we'd actually heard. Well, I got myself into such a state over it because of the way she was that I used to say to my mother, please make some notes because I'm never going to remember all this. And yet I've always had an excellent memory, really, up until my old age. So I think that was um, because of her. It had to be because of her. But Ramsey, uh, Ramsey Grammar School... Um, I went at 11, obviously. <clears throat> I preferred Ramsey Grammar School, I've got to be honest. And as I say, I loved <clears throat> I loved history. Um, I used to, a guy called Graham Curfee, who's very involved now with the Ramsey Pier. Now, he bought a house next to my parents um, years late. He was a lovely guy, Graham, and he and I used to always have... Um, big competitions and there was another over history who was going to get the decent marks in history and also Mike Collins was another one who was very good at history and I've 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 met them throughout my adult life as well because Mike worked in a company that I worked in years later as well which is nice I liked English I loved English and I loved doing plays at school I used the boys used to moan if any of the teachers said we're going to do plays everybody used to moan um, Miss Corlett, uh, she went on to be Mrs. Maylott um, in the hospital. She taught at the hospital. She was one of my English teachers and she was lovely. Um, she used to, to introduce us. She introduced us to a book called Seal Morning about this teacher that went and lived up in Sutherland with her niece. And that has always been my comfort book as an adult. I, the trouble is I've lent it to somebody and I, I don't know who I gave it to, but I haven't had it back for a while. I could do with it. 
it's it's a lovely lovely book um but no i liked ramsey grammar school the teachers were much nicer uh, than the lady i had um in the middle part of my primary education um let me see who did i have tony bromley for geography was a super guy um he was one of the few people he never seemed to discipline anyone he could hold a class without um without telling anybody else he was great um stan Carrison because i liked history obviously um the, the women teachers were very pleasant mrs foster for art i liked um mrs farragher for um needlework i didn't we had a bit of a psychopathic pe teacher um, who gave me a conduct mark because I couldn't get over the hurdles once. I did like running. I did enjoy running. I loved netball, loved mm. rounders, absolutely hated hockey, much to my father's upset because he was a big hockey player and uh, played for Ramsey and the island at, at some stage. In fact, I've got his old hockey shirt. I've kept that for sentimental reasons, can't throw it out. But no, I, I actually quite enjoyed Ramsey Grammar School. I didn't do as well as I really should have done. Um, I think also the Beatles and Boys came along when I was 14 and pop music. Um, and I regret it in a way, but I went back. I went back at a later stage and did a degree. So, uh, you know, eventually you, you can catch up. I wish I'd done it all earlier, but, you know, why does a child not work as hard as school as she should? I don't know. But I, I did enjoy Ramsey Grammar School. I was very friendly with Judy Clegg. Um, I, my parents, of course, were so strict. And I do remember coming home one day and she was very much into Elvis Presley. I was never really an Elvis fan, but she wanted to go and say and see Blue Hawaii that was coming at the pictures. I'd be about 12 or 13. And um, I had to ask, could I go to that? Well, you know, we'll have to wait to watch, see what your father says. I did go in the end. We used to go, Judy and I used to go into the street on a Saturday morning, uh, we thought we were terribly grown up, and we'd go down to um, the Jolly Roger, and we'd have a tea cake and a cup of tea. <laughs> we were still, I think, in um, knee-length socks at that time, but we really thought we were very grown up. I wasn't allowed in White's Cafe. I always remember and my mother said that I wasn't to go in there. She said it was full of teddy boys, so I'm sure I missed out a lot in my youth. My cousin would come over from uh, the Lake District, and he would sort of occasionally take me in, and I was so frightened that I'd be seen going in. But, as you know, different days, really. So I keep in touch now with a girl I went to school with called Duna Clegg. She's Duna Williamson. Duna's very good at poetry. So we still see each other every couple of months. We both like going for a walk and, and chatting, and we both like literature and, and the arts. So, uh, yeah. No, I, I mean, I, I did like Ramsey Grammar School. I, I can't say I'm, I, I disliked it. Right. Um, my first job. Well, my first job when I left school, my first proper job when I left school, um, was in the Isle of Man Bank in Regent Street. But before then, of course, we had holiday jobs, didn't we? We had, uh, I mean, children still do. I think it's very important that you have a summer holiday job. But I always, <laughs> I look back now, I always wanted to be able to make some money. And I think it's because possibly um, in those days you didn't get much pocket money. And in the 60s, of course, everybody had mini skirts. There was merry quant fashions, etc. cetera. And, um, and I was still in, my mother used to always buy these gore tweeted tweed skirts at Maud Cottier's and, and wool sweaters, which were very, very nice. But I wanted to buy my own clothes. And I do remember this probably was what triggered it off, really. When I was about nine or ten, my sister was older and used to have lots of um, pop records. She'd stop buying 45s. And I heard a piece of music uh, by Helen Shapiro called Walking Back to Happiness, and I loved it. But it was five and nine, and I didn't have five and nine um, a week in pocket money. So I remember going into Colburn's in Ramsey and saying to them, well, look, if, if I give you, if I pay this in three installments, can I come back in three weeks and then pick up my record? Which they were fine. You know, I think it was quite entrepreneurial really for a child at that age. But uh, my sister, my elder sister went and told my mother and all hell broke loose. And my mother came in and um, bought the record and said, don't you ever do that again. You know, it really embarrassed me. So I thought, well, I've got to make some money somehow. So then I started um, the Ramsey Carnival. You won five pounds, the person who collected the most uh, money for charity in a tin. You'd have to go and sort of shake this tin in underneath people's noses. And every single year I, 
when I did it, I think about three years, I won this five pounds and I'd go and um, for five pounds, you could go and get a dress uh, from Barbara Woods. I remember buying this dress and um, a pair of black patent shoes and um, a little handbag. You buy the whole lot for about a fiver. It was a tent dress, I think, the first one I bought. So then, so that's why I did it for three years. And I remember also, uh, we used to have regattas in Ramsey, I think on a Thursday afternoon, and my father would go over and, and I'd go over and sell programs. And I think, again, the person who sold the most programs uh, won some money. So I was always determined I was going to make some money. So at about 13, I think uh, I thought, I really want a proper job in the summer holidays. So I went to see Claude Conrad at the cinema. But unfortunately, he was on the commissioner's um, my father worked in the town hall. So he went straight to my father and said, you know, do you know your daughter's been looking for a job? So that didn't go down well either. So um, I think I was allowed a few hours because obviously I was under the age of 15 and I had a few hours at uh, the Ramsey swimming pool. But um, the first proper job I had in the summer holidays, which was full, t full time, um, which I did for two years with the, the Ramsey pottery, and that was lovely. I loved it because I got proper money in the summer and the, the aroma of the, the pomanders was wonderful as well. Um, so I did that for two years and then I worked at Maskell's jewellery business. I think I did two years as well. And then I went in the bank. So the bank was my my first job. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I, I didn't have the uh, confidence nor the qualifications to go across. I, I I wanted really, if I have to be honest, I wanted to be an air hostess. And um, I remember a conversation I had with my mother because I'd sent away to Cambrian for um, information. And I think if I'd lived in Castletown at the time, I would have gone for it. But we lived in Ramsey and my mother said, oh, you can't possibly do that. Your father would have a heart attack with you flying. And, and in those days, you know, we did as we were told. So I thought, what am I going to do? I, I would have liked floristry. Um, my grandfather, who died in World War One, one of my grandfather's, um, had trained as a florist. He had a market garden and, and a green grocery business, but of course he he died and, and the business was sold. Um, but I got no encouragement over that either. I think my mother said, oh, there's nowhere in Ramsey. I mean, I would have taken a totally different stance if it was my children, but you know, you can't go back. So I went in the bank, um, which I really didn't enjoy. It was a bit dull. I'm sure I wasn't much good for that. <laughs> I remember I remember the first day I went in, it was um, Biffy Johnson was the manager. He was lovely. And he said to me, oh, he said, you must be Cubby Swales's daughter. He said, I played hockey with him. But he tended to take me uh, under his wing and he took me to um, a Manx operatic meeting once. I think he wanted me to join the Manx operatic. And I had been in the Raven Players, um, which is a sort of a drama group in Ramsey. So um yeah that would have been great but I didn't drive at the time I wasn't allowed to drive till straight away my father said no you're too young but once I started earning money um I could drive but then I got a boyfriend I met um the man that I married and and so I didn't go into the operatic which is a shame really um so yes I can remember some of the names um there was Barbara Lewin was there um I'm closing my eyes trying to go through everybody here um because some of them were in the second branch I was in which was which was um, Victoria Street. So I might get them mixed up a bit. There was Kenny Morrison, who's dead. There was a man called, um, in one of the branches, Tom Kerr, Scottish man. He was very nice. Another man called Tom who died. Um, Cyril Kelly is a lovely man. I, I remember meeting him um, in Castletown. He eventually came to live in Castletown and he died only about two or three years ago. He was super um, Maureen Reynolds, Maureen married Jerry Reynolds, who was a big percussionist, um, a lady called Bab. I haven't seen her for a few years. Um, uh, Judith Sharrock, her parents had um, uh, uh, shoe shops, I remember her. David Gorn was in the bank, I remember working with David Gorn. A man called Ennett, I mean, I could go through quite a few of them. I'm sure I've forgotten some. Um, in those days, we used to have to wear these awful blue um, bry nylon, um, like a uniform, and I hated them. And I could never understand why some of the girls actually at lunchtime still kept theirs on when they went out. They were to stop you getting uh, dirty money, obviously, on, on, your, um, on your clothes. But I didn't like wearing them. I hated the damn things. Um, and when I went to the second bank, we were on ledger and statement machines. They were a bit like large sewing machines. 
I was never really very good at knitting machines, a bit like large knitting machines, and I didn't like knitting anyway. But um, I just, it just wasn't for me. I probably wasn't methodical enough. I just found it a bit dull. So I saw a um, an advert for a junior reporter on the Isle of Man Times, and I, I went for that. And I got the job. I remember getting the job. And I, I remember that afternoon I came down into Strand Street, and I bumped into my mother, who must have been shopping, and I said, oh, by the way, I've got a job in with the Isle of Man Times and she goes oh wait till your father hears that you know is there superannuation superannuation was another thing that I suppose that um ruled our life you know and the fact is I didn't have it in the end I retired with that superannuation but you know my dad lost his dad when um he wasn't even six you know they again they were days when there wasn't the security and, and superannuation and pensions was very important to my father and I don't blame him I've got to be honest but when girls started work, I think, well, we didn't have pensions. I th- obviously, if you went into teaching and, and nursing and eventually banking, you would have had a pension. But women really didn't all have pensions in those days. Um, and so, yeah, possibly I should have done as I was told. So, yes, so uh, that was when I was uh, in the bank. And then I went to work on a newspaper and I thoroughly enjoyed that. And I, st- I worked on a newspaper twice in my life. Um, I stayed on the paper till I got married. Um, in fact, after I got married, but then I found we'd bought a house in Andres and it seemed too far from Douglas to travel every night. I wasn't getting home till about, uh, half past six and that seemed quite late. So I left, but I went back to it. Um, once the children were older and, and, and I'd actually got a divorce, um, I went back to it and I really enjoyed it. And I still do bits of writing in a different way, really. Um, I write a few scripts now for a speech academy. Um, it's pin money, but it keeps the brain cells going. And I also edit the Family History Journal. So um, I like writing. I prefer it to cooking. <laughs> right. Um, just apologies there for missing uh, Keith and Susan Holden off um, people I worked with in the bank. I know them very well and often bump into them, especially at, uh, at Timwald on Timwald Day. So apologies if they if they go through this. It's just that there's so many people that I worked with. Um, my favourite memory of the Isle of Man. Oh my goodness. Um, I don't know if I've got one specific memory of the Isle of Man. Really, um, I've got various memories growing up. Uh, little things that I thoroughly enjoyed doing. So for example, as a child, um, I loved my favorite, well, my favorite present was a pair of roller skates. Um, I have to say that. I, in fact, I'm tempted to buy roller skates today and go careering down uh, Castletown Promenade, but I'd probably get arrested <laughs> and locked up. But I, I received some roller roller blades, roll, they weren't blades, roller skates, I think it was my ninth birthday, and I just loved them. And because my granny's house was next door to ours, um, and there wasn't a hedge or a fence between us, I used to have the two houses to go round. So I'd go up one path, down hers, round the end of the garden, and I'd go round like that. And then eventually I was allowed out onto May Hill and down into Beaumont Road, but I just loved roller skates. Um, another game I liked playing, I loved my dolls. I have to admit, I love my dolls. We used to be able to go, uh, but once every three months, my father would finish work on a Saturday at 12, because in those days, the town hall worked, they worked um, on a Saturday, it was open to 12. And we'd go in the car to uh, to Douglas, where we'd go to Felice's. This was special. We'd go and have a, a silver service meal at Felice's. And then we were given some pocket money. We did get pocket money, <laughs> obviously. And I'd go up to Boots. Now, Boots in those days was right on the corner on Victoria Street and um, Duke Street. And you'd go right to the top of the building. There was this little staircase right to the top of the building. And I spent, I think it was two and six on um, a cutout book of, of dolls with um, with tabs. And, and you'd cut everything out and you'd dress these cardboard dolls with paper clothes. And I loved doing that. In fact, um, about a year ago, I wanted to find something like that for my granddaughter. I've got three grandchildren, um, Edward, Ted, who's 20, nearly 22, um, and then two little ones, Toby and Emma, who are tiny and live across. And I wanted to take Emma down some of these um, 
books. Well, of course, I didn't know if they were around. So I put something on Facebook and Joy Joy Goth um, had collected a lot. So we met up and she gave them to me so I could take them down for Emma to play with. And they were great. I loved doing that. And then um, also people got catalogues in those days. And I remember my mother getting, I think it was a Burlington catalogue. And when she'd finished with it, I used to get the catalogue to actually cut out. So I can remember sitting in the sitting room with um, cutting out all these families and I made families out of it. And that kept me amused for hours. Um, plasticine, I loved plasticine. I'd make houses out of plasticine with ro- with uh, rooms and people sitting on the chairs. Um, the things that kept you amused when you were little, you know, we didn't have video games. In fact, I can be honest, I can honestly say I've never played a video game in my life. Um, and I don't think I'm going to start now. What other memories? I remember being, um, when I was 11, we used to have, there was a Carnival Queen competition. And um, for the small attendance, they put the names of the girls in the last years at um, primary school. So one year, I think it would be uh, Albert Road School. And the other year, it would be Ramsey uh, St. Michael's School in Ramsey. And I remember being chosen, my name was pulled out of a hat and um another little girl we all wore yellow dresses uh maureen neal there was more no it was francis neal not maureen there was francis maureen and rita were sisters but this was francis she was my age and we wore these little little lemon dresses and we used to have to sit on the the carnival float and the the winner that year was a very very pretty girl called jackie beden she was beautiful and her two attendants were very attractive there was cynthia stothard and um a lady called Lardner Burke, and I cannot remember her first name. She was extremely pretty. She's dead now, and she went to live in Castletown. But yes, she was called Lardner Burke. Um, so they were memories I had. Um, we didn't go away very often. My father, when he came back after the war, having lived through two world wars, you know, with different different times to what we're used to now. Although the world's pretty grim at the moment, but um, he never really wanted to go anywhere. And I often think if we didn't have relations his sister lived in Cumbria that's how I was introduced to the Lake District Uh, we didn't go very far so we'd go over to the Lake District and we'd just spend a week there and I'd go to uh, to Keswick my uncle would take us to Keswick he'd come down to Elverston to meet us Uh, we'd go to Elverston on the train and then he'd come over the um over the fells really and, and pick us up and take us back to that other part of Cumbria and um, we used, that was pleasant. That was very, very nice. In fact, I named one of my houses Ennerdale because Ennerdale was the first lake that I was ever introduced to. And it obviously um, held great affection in, in, in my heart because I liked it so much that I continued to go back there. I continued to go back to the Lake District often. But um, yeah, I called a house Ennerdale. So that was a holiday that I remember. We, we had... Um, a few holidays there. My father's sister lived in in a farm cottage. The family were farmers. And before they had the house built in Seascale, they actually lived, um, in fact, in the farmhouse for a while. And I remember walking up and there were these very dark trees. And I remember crying as a very small child because I was terrified of these trees. Strange. I love trees now. I get very upset now. I cry if anybody cuts a tree down. It's funny, isn't it, how you change? Um, so they were holidays in the Lake District. We went away. I didn't go away very often with my parents. I think my dad saved all. He was always saving his money. We used to go to family weddings. I remember going to Harrow on the Hill where my cousin got married. And when my sister went away to college, um, I remember going to Manchester to see her. But we didn't. This is, I mean, I know a lot of people didn't in the 50s and 60s. And I, but I felt sorry for my mother, really, because she was much more adventurous. And um, my father wasn't really the person to be married to if you're adventurous, because he really never wanted to go anywhere. He thought the island was a beautiful holiday island. He had everything done for him, obviously. He was a lovely man. My father was the affectionate. I mean, my, my father was the affectionate one. He was the He's the knee we would sit on. My mother was very practical, um, but a lot more buttoned up emotionally, really. But no, my father was lovely, but he, he wasn't a man who, who you could have an adventure with, really. Um, Right. So what else can I remember about the Isle of Man? I love the Isle of Man. I, I always joke that if um, they tried to take us under 
under their wing in Westminster and I'd be down there with my sickle and my scythe um, fighting for, you know, to, to keep the independence that we have. I'd hate to be part of um, the United Kingdom. Uh, although some people think we should be. I, I love the island. I, I Everything about it. I always liked the South as a child. It's funny how I end up living, ended up living there because as a little girl, um, I loved the castle. I, I love architecture. That's something that has developed over the years. I mean, I can't draw a straight line, so I could never have been an architect. But again, it's the history of architecture. And when I went back to study, I did, did a mixture of the history of um art and architectural design a bit of law and but it's the architecture I love and um the castle in, in Castle Town is beautiful I like limestone I much prefer limestone to sandstone um do you know it's funny when you get to 71 I don't know I I just love the Isle of Man I I've had times when I thought shall I go away and live I mean it's it's very tempting I've got a a, a younger son and my little grandchildren are down in Romsey in Hampshire which is a beautiful part of the world too and I I mean I do miss the, the grandchildren growing up and for, during Covid I didn't see them for nearly two years and that was awful I mean apart from a phone you know that wasn't the same I missed out on lots of cuddles and pan pushing uh, which was difficult, but I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm in the island. I get off a lot now. Um, I get over to see them. I go to the Lake District. Um, I've got an ambition to go around America on Amtrak. Um, if anything happens to the dog, I'm going to have to save for that. So I've got to stay well. I've got to stay well just so I can go around America on an Amtrak train. I've I've got that in my head. So I'm not ready to kick the bucket yet. But no. Um, I've been lucky. I know I've been lucky. I, I think that, again, as I said earlier, um, having strict parents can be quite, well, it's quite restricting in a way, whether they do it the same way now, if they were parents, they were much more lenient with my brother. <laughs> I think brothers tended to get away with more than, than girls did. Um, I've never had a daughter, so I don't know what I would be like with a daughter. But I was determined when I had my sons that, um, they'd be encouraged to do as many hobbies that they wanted and um, they were always praised. So yeah, I probably did it slightly differently, uh, but I remember talking to Val Cottle and she said that you take into adulthood uh, what you liked as a child and you reject what you don't, which was quite quite sensible. I had very honest parents I, I'm, and I had a safe, a very safe upbringing. Um, I, I didn't grow up thankfully with parents that got drunk or screamed or shouted. It was a very dignified um, childhood. And so I'm very grateful for that.